one called a chess pass, right? And I used to get them in the face. <laughs> I just wanted to know that she respects the game of netball. What even is netball? Harrison, you are a freak! This is the sport evolving at its very best. Unbelievable. <laughs> Can you believe it? No mai e ki te hōtaka o te poi tara fiti kiwi. I'm Bridget Honeycliffe. It's time to preview the ANZ Premiership and what will be an unpredictable season with a cloud of Omicron hanging over the competition. Monday's round one match between the Stars and Pulse has been postponed after the Pulse requested a deferment under the league's COVID-19 match postponement policy. Sunday's other round one match has remained scheduled to be played at this stage with the Magic hosting the Mystics and tactics taking on the Southern Steel. To help me preview the season, I'm joined by former Silver Ferns coach Yvonne Willering and a Hong Kong coach and assistant New Zealand men's coach Dion Tefetu. Kia ora. So, Dion, who's going to win? No, <laughs> <laughs> jokes. Jokes. I'll get, I'll get to your top three at the end. Um, <laughs> Gee, <thanks>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, first, um, what did you guys make of the Silver Ferns performance at the quad series Yvonne what did it highlight to you about what New Zealand needs to do yeah I mean I think we all were pretty disappointed and not just because we didn't win it but just also in the way that uh, we certainly played some of the games and also we were we were exposed I mean and particularly by Australia and I think what it did it highlighted the gap between the A and Z competition and the Silver Ferns and uh, this year (laughs) I know it's with COVID as well, but the ANZ has to be of better quality because that is our lead in, into the Commonwealth Games. So in that respect, uh, Mark Foster, Donna Wilkins, Deb Fuller and myself, what we're doing at the moment, we're going around the countryside and we're seeing ANZ teams twice during the year. I guess it provides a different voice, but we're also just doing skill sessions with them. And certainly um, with me, uh, it's about the defence work. And it's in part, um, my main aim really really is to reduce that penalty count. I mean, if you have a look at the games last year, over 100 penalties a game in some of the games, you know, and you can't have defence players standing beside a player. So it's got to be about taking clean intercepts and it's also got to be about consistency and performance. So if we can provide any support to the ANZ coaches, then that's what we're going to do. Are you talking about high penalty count at the Silver Ferns level? No, this was throughout the ANZ. Right. Got to appreciate the players that you know they took their game plan whatever from the ANZ to the Silver Ferns and suddenly they realized that what was happening in the ANZ and yeah they were getting penalized but it wasn't of a great concern well at, at the Silver Ferns level if you get penalized it is of great concern because again you've got a situation where you're standing beside the player and you're not actually actively involved in the game. Does Nolene say to you, Yvonne, I'd like you to work on this with them, or do you kind of have free reign? I'd love to have free reign. No, no. We're actually working with the ANZ coaches. You've got to appreciate they've got to have a buy-in. You don't just go in there and do your bit and then expect things to happen, you know. So we, we talk, uh, certainly uh, Dev Fuller talks to the ANZ coaches, whoever it may be. They put down a list of what they're looking at if they have a particular hassle. Like in my case, if, for instance, they want to do a diamond defence or a wall, they want to do something sp- specifics, then certainly, uh, you know, I'll provide them assistance. Or it would be simply just making them uh, tighter in their play. And that's really just that the timing of the intercept and how they can better do it. But again, it is totally with the ANZ coaches' blessings. I remember last year, the first month or so of the ANZ Premiership, there was a lot of talk about um, uh, the uh, rough play in the ANZ Premiership context, players going late on the ball. Uh, We had some warnings. I think we had a sending off. Um, Dion, did did you think it was worse last year? Yeah, um, I think, you know, are we sort of trying to to, um, get... um, New Zealand players to play play a style of um, Australian defence that simply just isn't working for us. And um, 
or you know are we trying to to get those players at the ANZ level to to um, you know step up to what what we perceive as the physicality that's needed to compete on the international stage and and mm-hmm. I think um, you know I think that comes down to coaching um, as as Yvonne saying you you know that's a responsibility where where uh, maybe need to try some different things at um, you know at training level and, and it's um, pleasing to hear that Yvonne's going around and, and doing some work in that respect. Uh, just going back to the the quad series in January, I feel like the spine of, of the team is less obvious than it was six months leading up to the World Cup, if you want to make that comparison. Back when you, you had the likes of Folau, Langman, Corpua, Dead Certs, then players like Ikanasio, Watson started to cement themselves and so on. Dion, do you feel like there's still a lot of positions in the Silver Ferns up for grabs? Short answer is yes. I mean, you know, those names you mentioned before, that's that's quite a chunk to take out of a out of a team. Um and I do, you know, I um I would really like to see Kimi Orapoi um back back in the ferns. Mm. I'm not I'm not sure um how, how she can go about doing that, but I, I would love to see her back in there. I think defensively and offensively, she's um she was probably a spark that that we were missing in that midcourt. Um, but there's there's definitely positions um, you know that need to be solidified, and probably goal attacks one of the big ones. Even Gina Crampton, the captain, she gets benched sometimes. Yvonne, I don't know if that's a worry, or does that just say that there's not a lot separating players in the squad now? Yeah, I think certainly in the quad series, um, like Dame Nolan, I think she took some players just to see how they would would go, uh, you know, under a certain pressure. And like uh, Dion, you're talking about Poi, Kimi or Poi, yeah. I mean, she came on in one game for the Silver Ferns and boy, did she make a difference just by her just sheer energy and enthusiasm. So, yeah, they need to have some different combinations, uh, certainly. And midcourt is a problem. Uh, and I think that if you have a look at it, uh, even like from a centre pass off, you know, we struggled at times. And if that ball doesn't go into your shooters with a lot of confidence, again, then also your shooting sets are going to go down. So that is something certainly that they have they have to look at. And uh, I think they have to look at that during the ANZ. And that's why it has to be of, of a good quality because, you know, we need to see their players at their best. Mm. OK, let's have a look at the ANZ Premiership. The two sides that finished at the bottom of the ladder last year made the most radical changes to their sides in the off-season. The Pulse and Magic made five changes each. Very few points separated the four other teams last year. Those sides have relatively stable lineups. That would suggest we're in for a very tight competition. But in the words of Mystics coach Helene Wilson, it will take more than a top seven to get through this particular season. Teams will have to dig deep into their player pool. Uh, so analysing the teams comes with a bit of grain of salt, but we'll start with the Northern Mystics. They've retained the bulk of their squad and regained the defensive services of Phoenix Karaka and Michaela sokolic Beatson. Um, Yvonne, are the Mystics in a good position to defend their title? Yeah, and I agree with Helene. Uh, it's still going to be a situation. Uh, well, you can't rely on a main seven. Who knows what COVID's going to bring? And, you know, teams are not always going to be at full strength. But you look at Mystics on paper, and absolutely, they have to be well up there, you know, near the top or at the top. Karaka, Sokolitz, Beetson, and Fitzpatrick, and you, you know, you mentioned that. I mean, what a great defensive combination, mm. and you can uh, flick mm. them around. Midcourt, you've got Tuiava, Earl, Ioni, and you know, and you've got Nweki, Vui and Faulkner. Now, I'd like to see that combination of Nweki and Vui. Vui should have taken the court more, I thought, for Mystics last year. And now she's got an opportunity to do so. So, yeah, pretty excited with that team. Tremendous amount of experience in that team. So, yeah, the expectation is they will do well. But they will see this as a new challenge. Yeah, and Dion... As Yvonne was saying, um, having Vui will obviously get a lot more court time this year and she's not afraid to go to the post. That could be quite important for the Mystics to avoid becoming predictable and relying too much on Wiki. Yeah, I like that. Um, I really, really like that in her game, actually. And I, I think that um, we should be encouraging all goal attacks, no matter who the shooter is, to, to go to the post. Um, you know, she shot 80%. Um, uh, she had 11 games. So, I mean, it's only only eight goals per game. But 
if you look, um, she was only doing four feeds a game. So that says to me she's she's catching the ball or she's being fed the ball and she's going to the post. You know, she's not she's not dishing off to to Grace, um, even though, you know, we'd all love to be able to, to dish off to someone like Grace. Um, 96 centre pass receives for, for the for the year and, and she's versatile. She can play shoot, wing attack, goal attack. So she has a good understanding of the ball coming down the court um, and, and what the entry into the goal circle is like. And I think that shows in her game. And um, I think she'll be, um, I think she'll be quite comfortable, uh, you know, another season under her belt this year um, going into that role. Yeah. But also, Dion, don't you think that uh, having a Vui in there and she is prepared to shoot, it means that the defenders of the other team are going to give Nwaki a little bit of a break because it won't be two-on-one defence because they're going to have to mark Vui because if they don't, she will shoot them. That That's exactly right. And, and um, you know, I think Grace... Um, Grace will be thankful for that and and so you know um, we can all appreciate she does take a bit of a hiding um, when, when she gets left to, she gets left a lot with two on her so um, yeah I think um, like if Vui is, is shooting and shooting well throughout the season man what a tough prospect for um, opposing teams mm. The other Auckland side, the Stars, finished fourth last year. Since their inception, the Stars have changed their squad up a lot each year, but this time they've just had the two ta- two changes to the squad. I think that puts them in a good position to build on the promise they showed in the first half of last season. Dion, if the Stars are playing close to their full potential, are they serious contenders? Yeah, look, I, I do think they are. Um, they've got some, um, you know, you've got, I think their problem is, you know, if you're looking around that shooting circle, how much pressure can can Maya shoulder again this year? Um, Hume shot 74% and Mully Salas shot 79% last year. But like we were saying about Vui, you know, they need to come in and just and just go go to the post. Um, they got some great leadership there, but um, I can't help but feel that maybe a, a taller shooter just to give them some more versatility in that circle just to and ease the pressure on, on Maya, um, you know, would would have been probably not a bad I, I feel like Jamie Hume, though, she, she did step up. She wasn't afraid to go to the post. Yes, she didn't have um, really high a- accuracy, but, yeah, Wilson really struggled with her shooting accuracy, accuracy last year, and Hume, Hume wasn't phased when she missed. She just kept going. But, Yvonne, you don't want to put too much pressure on the one player, but the Stars yeah. really, they, they need Wilson to have a good year. Absolutely, and they do put a lot of pressure on her. But also part of that is the responsibility of the midcourt. It's also how the shooters are being fed. Now, Wilson on many occasions actually came out of the circle and also started playing a little bit more as a wing attack before she went in there. So, you know, sometimes you think, is it fitness? But not really, because certainly when she got to the ferns, her accuracy did improve somewhat. But, yeah, you still are not that comfortable on the shooting stats of those three um, shooters that uh, have just been named. And uh, certainly defensively, I think that they, they're pretty strong. Notice again, Harrison's back. So, you know, <laughs> that's, uh, interesting teaming up with uh, Timu and uh, Johnson's going to be there. Johnson, um, and that's Kayla Cullen in the past, mm-hmm. she is not just a, a good defender. She's a real tough defender. Probably uh, suits more to a one-on-one defense rather than space marking. I'd like to see that change slightly. But what I do like about her is she is prepared to take that ball through on attack and even feed the shooters if, if they happen to be on. So, yeah, they need to play as a team, though, to have any chance um, you know, of taking it out. But obviously, gee, mine, the competition hasn't even started yet. Yeah. Um, yeah, Johnson um, getting the Silver Ferns recall saw a, saw a lot of co- lot of court time in January in the quad series, having not played any domestic netball for two years. It was quite incredible. Um, given that it, we won't have Jane Watson and Katrina Rory won't be available for the Com Games, Yvonne, how important could could Kayla be to the Silver Ferns plans? Yeah, I was actually surprised that the media didn't make more of that really yeah. because. 
I yeah. thought it was a gamble taking Johnson there because, like you just said, you know, she really hadn't played. And so there was a lack of, now not necessarily lack of fitness, but certainly lack of court fitness. And the actual court fitness is different than just like being fitness tested. So it is different. Um, and there were times when uh, that, that was evident, and that's why she didn't uh, always play full games. Um, but certainly, um, that I thought that she actually had some really, she had some good games uh, there. Mm. And I can just see her getting better and better. But again, needs to change up because in the past, like a few years ago, and I know it's a few years ago, but she was quite penalised quite heavily, particularly uh, like when she played goal defence, wing defence. Wing defence being penalised probably isn't quite as bad as being penalised as a goal defence because, you know, you're giving away a goal. Uh, in that circle. So uh, yeah, I'm going to be interested to see her progression because I know that, uh, you know, on, if she's playing well, she's going to be included in the Ferns. Yeah. Um, right, to the Magic, Wooden Spooners for the past two years. Uh, the Magic signed some big names in the off-season, picking up former Silver Ferns, Amelia Ann Ekanasio and Katrina Rore, also Paul Stalwart, Claire Kirsten and shooter Bailey Mez. Rore has announced she's expecting her second child. It's t- to be confirmed whether she'll take the court over the first few rounds. Ignacio is also is on the comeback trail after having her second child. She'll be eased in with uh, limited minutes for the first few rounds. Kiana Williams will miss the first few weeks due to a back injury. Um, so Yvonne, the first few weeks, at least at the Magic, will have a completely new attacking end. What do you make of it? Yeah, when I read the team on paper, I was pretty excited and I was really looking forward to the first game because, what, it's Magic Mystics, isn't it? You know, and but now you've got all these injuries. So, uh, yeah, the only good thing about it is that these teams are going to play each other three times. And we've seen in past years, you can still have like three or four losses and still come through at the end. So, uh, yeah, I, I guess it's a situation. When are they going to come together and, and as a full team? Because as a full team, yeah, they're going to be right up there, I believe. And, I, you know, initially I would have picked them to be in the top three with the lineup that they had initially had. Yeah. Um, Dion, is this a, a really great opportunity for Bailey Mez to have a big season? She could play a big role for this team? Yeah, absolutely. She's um, she's experienced. Um, she's she's um, been to the very highs of netball and she's also experienced the, um, you know, the, the dark side of netball. And, you know, I, I think that she, for me, at goal attack, uh, you know, I just remember when she would she would play against you know two of the the best ranked um, Australian circle defenders, and she'd just you know she'd burn them. Um, so that I'd love to see her out there having a having a big year this year at goal attack. But you know, hopefully she can get that injury cleared up. Yeah, my my concern still is though her her stats. Um, mm. You know, yeah. and they uh, well. I was going to say they have been the greatest, but also she has, hasn't been prepared to take the shots. Now you can say that's because she was a feeder to Nuweki in the Mystics. And yeah, it's going to be interesting to see whether that's going to be exactly the same when she's in combination with Ikanasio. I don't believe it's that way. I think that you'll find with Ikanasio, she will be uh, able to take shots. And I would like to see her take the shots. Um, some people have tr- said play her at wing attack because she's a good feeder. I've seen her at wing attack and uh, maybe she was thrown into the position um, but um, I think she still believes she is a goal attack. I think Mez had some of her best career moments at, at goal shoot. She can really go full stretch there pulling in those high balls and her agility mm. to be able to land in a slither of space on the baseline but it's just been so frustrating at times following her career because you know how skilled she is but she just yeah. hasn't been able to play to her full potential for long periods of time, whether it's um, positional changes, injury, shooting confidence, whatever. Mm-hmm. But no, I re- I'm hoping she gets a decent amount of court time at goal shoot, see how she goes. Um, yeah, it- actually, I'd forgotten, I'd forgotten that she, uh, about the goal shoot, and you're yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. 2015 World Cup. Yeah, and, you know, and we keep looking at her, and she's a great athlete, you know, and she is. She's hard to defend. What I also like about her game is that she does defence work. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yes, mm. sometimes she contacts, but that can be tidied up. So, yeah, actually, it would be really interesting to see her play goal shooter with Ikanasio in front of her. Yeah, yeah. And Ikanasio has said she wants to get back into the Ferns and wants to go to the Commonwealth Games, and I'm sure, barring injury, she will do that. So I feel like whenever we have a conversation about the Silver Ferns now, um, a lot of it is 
our hopes are pinned on Ignacio. Um, yeah. It's not ideal, is it, Yvonne? <laughs> it's true, though. It's true. Yeah. You know, because, we, yeah, and we're all saying it. And I and I go to, you know, and ask Dan Knowles as well, you know, is she relying on that, you know, and she obviously denies it because, it, and so she should deny that. But really, on and off the court, she is needed in the team. One, certainly she's prepared to shoot long, but she also has a tremendous influence in the team as a whole. And it's interesting, uh, like you mentioned at the beginning about like the world champs and stuff. And um, she is a player that that uh, basically says, you know, uh, do what, give a hundred percent as I do, and follow in the same footsteps, and you give absolutely your best as well. We had that in Langman, we had that in Kopua. Certainly, we've now got it with Ekanasio in the ferns, but we don't have enough of that. We've got a lot of nice leaders in the team, and Fitzpatrick certainly is one of them. But they're what they're not quite the same. How can I put it? Strong saying, listen, people, I'm giving my best, you give your best. Mm. Uh, with Rory in the magic, it is a defence heavy side. Incumbents Georgia Tong, Ed and Mackay there. Oceane Maihe's come down from the stars. I was kind of surprised Maihe didn't get more court time last year. Dion, is she a player who could really excel with some solid court time? Yeah, I think. Um... Araroa will do, do wonders with, with um, Oshin and uh, I, well, she has to have a big year, doesn't she? Um, and, and I think she will. And, you know, um, Tong's still um, still going to be as strong as always. I mean, she was included in the um, in the Cadbury series um, towards the end of last year. But yeah, I think uh, Oshin has a, has a great, great chance uh, to, to get out, get out in the court and um, stamp her mark and keep that bib. But yeah, they've got they've got some interesting times ahead, and that's a real shame. Um, you know, with with Katrina, well, it's not a shame that she's happy, but um, they they're sort of going to have to fish around for another another defender, I guess, and then it sort of comes down to um, you know finding the funds to be able to do that as well. Mm. Claire Kirsten in the Magic Colours this year. It'll be interesting to see whether Kirsten plays mostly in centre and wing, does Winders go to wing defence or vice versa. Could be an international combo going forward. On that, the Silver Fern centre, that's a big question. I've, even though Kirsten appears to be in the driver's seat, probably mm-hmm. the most consistent for a while now, at the same time, it feels like it's still wide open. We've had about five players tested at centre since the retirement of Laura Langman. Yvonne, do you have a favourite for that position? <laughs> I think you've answered your own question, actually. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yes, you have, you're right. You've got the Kirsten and Winders combination, um, whichever way around, and I actually think that it'll be played both ways around anyway. Um, Kirsten provides different at centre. Uh, she's steady, she's stable. Winders has got a lot more uh, well, oomph, whatever, but she sort of passes and goes. Probably hasn't got the same caring, and I mean that in a positive way, not a negative way, you know, but she's prepared just to let the ball go and get up court. And I rate them both, and it'll be really interesting, and certainly they're going to form a combination. But we also have, obviously, if you're talking Ferns, the Saunders-Crampton uh, combination, and, you know, I don't know whether they're going to select players in combination or they will then, uh, you know, still have opt to put others in there. And again, Kimmy or Apoy must come into that mix as well. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. I think you'll see them played both ways around because they will provide something different to the game uh, both ways around. Winders at the moment probably, again, is more a one-on-one defender, although she's certainly starting to read the intercept. And Kirsten, um, yeah, she's quite tactical in her approach to the game. Mm. Right, let's head to the Pulse, finished fifth last year. They don't muck around, parted ways with coach Gail Parata after just one season, brought back popular coach Yvette McCall's and Jury and made five changes to the squad. It was a bit of a bombshell when Pulse stalwart stalwart Amelia and Ignacio signed with the Pulse. Um, Actually, Dion, you have acted as a player agent for a couple of the Silver Ferns, haven't you? I'm just wondering, how tough can that contracting period be on players? It's tough on me. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Lots of phone calls. <laughs> yeah, it's a busy old time. Look, um, yeah, I think it, it is it is tough on the players as well. Um, you know, I can't speak. I I can only speak for the two that that I act for. But um, 
just I think the biggest decision, you know, first of all, is is for the player to decide, um, you know, what they want out of the following season. And and but I can tell you now that um, the coaches come, you know, they they uh, come into that decision um, big time. And mm-hmm. you know, that was for for the pulse to um, secure the services of a vet was was uh, huge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, so yeah. she's on board for a year, isn't she? I think, and um, with a view to trying to find the Pulse's next coach. Luckily, yeah, it goes a little bit goes a little bit more than that, though. What mm. you've got to appreciate with McCall's and Dury, like it's not like she left and came back. I mean, she left because she had the commitments with the New Zealand Under Twenty One team, and she chose to obviously focus on that. Um, unfortunately, the World Youth Cup was cancelled, yeah. so uh, yeah, that, that ended up with her not having a team to coach. And don't forget, the World Youth Cup is once every four years. So yeah, it was uh, and that decision came, um, and so yeah, when that opportunity came back for her I mean I, I don't yeah. blame her for coming back into the mix and certainly yeah she will draw players to her she's a great coach yeah oh, absolutely yeah and luckily for the Pulse Tiana Maturo has returned to the franchise where she'd previously struggled to get court time that won't be an issue this time after a breakout 2021 and Silver Ferns call up Maturo and Alia Dunn in the shooting circle again Dion are you looking forward to that combination yeah very much so um Wow, you know how, how exciting! Two young guns, both very, um, both tall, both strong, both have lots of skills, and um, they can both shoot the ball. And uh, they they're going to be a, a real handful for um, for any opposition to to look after those two. I mean, um, Dunn always has been a handful for for any any opposition, but um, you know having those two back together and um, a very similar mindset, those those two young ladies. So uh, they're going to be hard to deal with, that's for sure. Yeah, they play, yeah. On, also, play, play on intuition. Yeah. What was that? They really have gained an experience. Matura in particular, yeah. I mean, it, yeah. just same with the combination with Fisher and Steele. I think her going down there, and yeah, it was only for a year, but I think it was a tremendous experience for her. I think yeah. that she thrived uh, you know, on the added responsibility, and I know she will take that back to the Pulse. Mm. I wonder how much the Pulse are going to miss Claire Kirsten, coupled with the fact that Maddie Gordon has an injury. I imagine Gordon would have been the main choice at centre. They brought Ericana Peterson in as cover. Hopefully Gordon will be available soon. I guess the centre bib could go to either Peterson, Paris Lokatui or Whitney Soonis. Um, Yvonne, what do you think of the Pulse midcourt? Yeah, it's a bit sad with Maddie Gordon. I mean, mm. I... I had a bit to do with her and it's a big loss it absolutely is so it'd be interesting to see when she does come back I do rate uh, Ericana Pedersen I've had uh, uh, sort of some coaching with her in the tactics so certainly rate her but she is a newcomer to the Pulse so I would say soon as has the experience really in that Pulse environment but they will make changes as well uh, within that. Lokatui I see her as a wing defence I do not see her as a centre I mean she's still a new kid on the block and uh, I think she will want to nail that wing defence position and make that her own. Yeah, Dion, didn't you coach um, Paris Lokatoya at, at age group level? Was she a standout then too? Yes, yeah, she was, um, on and off the court uh, as well. Um, for someone so young, you know, she's a, she's a triple international. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I'm with Yvonne. I, I do not um, – it, it's weird for me seeing her um, with, in a centre bib. Uh, she played goal defence um, when I was coaching her, and I think she'll really nail that that wing defence um, area. She's strong, um, you know. She's very, very smart. She's beyond her years, and she always has been. Um, so, yeah, go go Paris. Yeah, I think she was born to defend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I like that. Yeah, yeah. Yvonne, um, the Pulse Cup signed a couple of Australian players, one of them being Christiana Manua. I thought she was great when she played for the Magic a few years ago, really smart. Um, I guess she'll add a bit of extra metal to the defensive end. Yep, absolutely. Um, she'll do that. Uh, the only thing is, again, 
the concern is that penalty count. Um, you know, she, she needs to take the intercepts clean. Like you said, she does read play well. So the last thing you want is her standing beside a player, an attacking player. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how she works in with Kelly Jury. Uh, and Jury, I think it's it's interesting. When she plays goal defence, she actually hunts for intercepts. So both of them will then go hunting for intercepts. And I see that combination just growing with the time. Mm. Okay, let's go to the tactics. Runners up last year, they'll obviously miss Jane Watson just as the Silver Ferns have missed her. Defender Karen Berger, who had a superb 2021 domestic season, will pair up with either Kate Lloyd or Clara Nawai. To me, it feels like the tactics are missing a piece looking at the overall squad. Yvonne, I feel like they've been lacking a genuine third shooting option to provide backup to Ali Bird and to Pius Selby Rickett. Yeah, yeah they're sort of... Well, last year they were sort of there and then they weren't, weren't they? And then they did become predictable. And like the shooters you just mentioned, you got Bird and Selby Ricketts. What you see is what you get with them. Bird still prefers to shoot close, although I've seen her take some beautiful long shots as well. Uh, they certainly have added two uh, additional shooters to their mix. But again, they're young, they're inexperienced. So um, it'll be interesting to see what happens. But I, hopefully they will add something different to it. Uh, Hannah Glenn came in. She was a trainer training partner and when she actually did get her opportunity man she was confident and she was prepared to actually turn to the post and then you've got what um Kolotu yeah and I like her Mm. she is fast and she's exciting and she's just a wonderful little individual but boy you know sometimes you go you need to be kept in check here you know so but again you know just that enthusiasm in her game so yeah it's just a question really with them that shooting circle how they can combine and not just stick just with the experience, but give these others an opportunity as well. Yeah. Looking back at that final last year and what they were up against, in many ways I feel like the tactics did remarkably well to come within two of the Mystics who had home advantage. I I don't know what else Watson and Berger could have done to try and stop that ball into Wiki apart from growing a couple of inches. Um, But I feel like last year was maybe their best opportunity. That was when they needed to do it. Dion, what do you think their chances are this year? I think your chances are good, actually. Um, particularly with Calera um, in, in the circle um, and, and Kate Lloyd, you know, adds another dimension in, in that circle with um, with Berger. Um, I watched uh, Calera last year. You know, she could really compete with, mm. with Grace um, mm. in, in that circle. And she's, she's um, I saw her really give Grace some trouble uh, in, in some of the games. And I think, you know, if, if Berger's not having to worry about, um, you know, having to drop back all the time and try and, um, you know, both and try and space mark or cross mark and, and hunt the outside and then, you know, that ball gets bombed in behind them, not just with the Mystics, obviously. Yeah. Um, I, I think they're okay, to, mm. to be perfectly honest. I um, I probably, and, you know, you and Yvonne talking about the shooting circle there, I, I was surprised they didn't sign um, Amelia Wormsley um, I thought. Oh she'd... yeah, because she filled in for them um, near the end of last season, didn't she? Yep. And, and wow, you know, yeah. wow. Yeah. Um, she, yeah. The pulse was, uh, pulse was smart to grab her. They were. Yep. Mm. I, and I met I met Amelia, and and she's just just a lovely, lovely um, young lady. And mm. but you know, man, she she uh, I would say in in two or three years time we're going to see her she's going to be one of new zealand's standout shooters because she's got it she's smart she's tall Mm. she's accurate so um yeah a bit of a surprise there but you know i'm not i'm uh you know i'm not not my decision (laughs) yeah just with that in circle um you know what with lloyd uh with the two there it actually puts quite a bit of pressure on Berger because really they are quite inexperienced. And for that final last year, and quite a few people have, have said this as well, I know there's nothing you can do about the height of, of Nwiki and it's difficult to get that pass in, but I wonder what would have happened if Berger had gone to wing defence and marked up on Tuiava. Oh, so yeah. at least pass wouldn't have been a great pass and they actually had players available to take the in-circle position away from Berger and at one stage I thought place you know put Berger at wing D because you know she's a nuggety defender and uh, she'll take ball outside the circle why wait till the ball goes in before you do something about it Mm. yeah and then but then you think well well, you know why wasn't that happening anyway with with um you know the the um with Charlotte 
without Ellie out there. Why wasn't she over the? I mean, she's reasonably tall. You know, why wasn't she doing that anyway? Mm. Right, so the Deep South, Southern Steel, so kind of surpassed the expectations of quite a few last year when they finished third. Big part of their success was down to the shooting partnership between English import George Fisher and Tian Maturo. They would have been gutted to lose Maturo, but they've picked up mystic shooter Saviour Tui. This will be her third ANZ season. Uh, Dion Saviour is another player you coached in Wellington. Do you think she's on the verge of really stamping her mark on the premiership? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, I was lucky enough to, to um, have Savia for three three campaigns and she um, she just offers something completely different. Um, a player that smiles, for a starter, no matter what's going on on the court. But, um, you know, she that girl can shoot and, and she can jump and she's physical. Um, she, I think... Um, or you know there'll be a difference in play obviously between her and her and Tiana but um, the thing with Savia is, is she can shoot and, and she mm. can just turn and shoot that ball so if she if she is out the front of, of, um, Fisher. of Fisher or vice versa um, you know again I'd, I'd rate Savia as, as someone that's in that uh, same um, you know elevation I guess as, as mm. Bailey Mess and she you know she can um, she can play. And I think, uh, yeah, I, I'd love to. I was stoked that she went down there. Um, yeah. Can't, can't wait to see what happens. I think she'll thrive down there. Yeah. yeah. Yvonne, what do you think of the Steel's chances this year? Yeah, well, actually, we've done a couple of sessions with them. Actually, we just came back last week, actually, from them. Uh, and they're inexperienced, but they're certainly developing a strong team bond. And that's what the Steel has always done. It's that team, mm. you know, the togetherness that has pulled them through. The other shooter that you haven't mentioned is Georgia Heffernan. Yeah, and yeah. she also adds heights. And it's really neat to see her come back. So, yeah, it, I think that between those three, um, they've got some pretty good combinations. Other end of the court, it was really interesting interesting because you've got Kate Burley who's come from the Mystics and she's a real talker out on court she likes to you know to, to be quite vocal and we all know Selby Ricketts is a really <laughs> quiet player so <laughs> it was really interesting just to, to see if what sort of interaction was between them and, uh, and I'm sure they'll come to an understanding there so uh, yeah no Fafita back there um, but yeah, mm. I think that they still will have a very strong unit especially with um, Heffernan, Kate Heffernan and and Saunders in that mid-court. So, mm. uh, yeah, the, the, it's that as a team, eh, that the Steel have always sort of thrived on on the games. Mm. Yvonne, do you prefer Kate Heffern at wing D or centre? Uh, I think at the moment her preference is still wing defence. Uh, I actually asked her that question as well, and she finds it easier to go from wing defence and then to centre than the other way around. And I think part of that is because then she has an opportunity of reading the play, reading the game as it comes down to her, and then have that progression. I like her as centre because, again, she's got height. And, boy, if you've got a tall centre, it's got to add something to your team. Yeah. So, yeah, I'd like to see her make both those positions um, her own. Probably for the Ferns, if you're looking further ahead, probably centre um, is where they're really looking for players. I mean, we've discussed how many times tonight we've discussed uh, players, mm. you know, in the centre position. And we've got a number of wing defences um, available, obviously, uh, pretty inexperienced players. So, yeah, if she can make centre her main position and wing defence her second, yeah, I think she might be in with a chance. So I did ask you to come up with a top three. Um, Dion, who do you think will make the finals? <laughs> yeah, Dion. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was going to be ladies before gentlemen here. But, um, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Uh, I've got Mystics Pulse Tactics. Okay. Wow. Yep, Mystics Pulse Tactics. Okay, Yvonne, your top three. And you honestly think I'm going to go down this path? Okay, yeah, it's, I mean, it's going to be dependent on player availability, yeah. you know it, I yeah. know it, you know, and in the past we look at it, and I, I used to do, you know, predictions from week to week, and I was not great, you <laughs> know, because, yeah, there is, and again, and I alluded to at the beginning, that inconsistency between teams, you know, you have a, a beautiful first half, and then they blow it in the second half, but the two teams on paper, I had certainly were mystics and magic and, uh, you know, the rest, yeah, they're going to fight it out. But now 
when I obviously know a little bit more about the magic, um, you know, it's a question of when are these players going to come back? And uh, yeah, it, it becomes tricky um, with regards to that. I think tactics will still be up there. Uh, they've shown in the past. Mystics are going to be hard to beat uh, because they now know what it takes to win and it's taken them years to develop, I, whether you call it culture or the feeling of that. You talk about the win, but you've got to experience it. So they are going, still going to be very hard to beat. Yep. I'm going to say Mystics Stars final and third spot could either be Magic Pulse Tactics or Steel. Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, 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 that was I, very I, daring of you. This, this will be the first year I think that that I I think uh, you know obviously with with our friend COVID, but this this is this is the, the year that I think it's really going to come down to coaching. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's it's important, eh? I mean, and and we've said that there's limited preparation now going into Commonwealth Games. You know, there's also some double headers which are going to be interesting to see how players handle that. We're playing two days in a row, and I think it happens on a couple of occasions with teams. But you know, players, yeah, everyone, well. Yeah, you know, yeah, I'd say everyone in the ANZ would love to be part of the Commonwealth Games. So, you know, whilst they've got to really focus on their own teams, also you can't help it. There has got to be a slight focus on what lay ahead with regards to fern selection. <laughs> Thank you.